at the bottom here needs some color. Going with the combination of warm purple, purple brown. Being careful not to run this wet area into the tree, which is also still wet, as you can see by that sheen in the camera. I could have waited a little bit longer for the tree to dry, but I got impatient. Sometimes it works out okay, sometimes impatience kicks you, but we'll see what happens this time. <laughs> uh, dotting some more of that color in here so they get more pigment going and maybe some granulating. Dotting some greens, wet and wet. Having fun with letting the colors spread. Some of that metallic green as well. And now for real, I'm gonna let this dry. Actually, while things in the foreground are drying, I've decided to work a little bit on the more distant background stuff. I want to have some waterfalls trailing down through these distant hills. I have here my Uniball Signo Angelic White Gel Pen. And I'm using it to just trail these white streamers from the edges, from the top edges of these hillsides down. And what I do with my, the edge of my finger is that while the ink is not quite dry, I just brush my fingertip over it to blend the tail end of my stroke because it takes a second or two for the gel pen ink to dry. I remember looking up at hillsides towards the mountain side of a uh, side of the island in Hawaii and every time there was a rainstorm you could tell because suddenly these thin little streamers of white would be festooning the hillsides far far in the distance and and this is what you would see all you would see would be these thin white trails falling from the low points in the hillsides and vanishing into mist down below.
think I'm also going to darken my upper sky range area. So more of that squid ink blue, which is what I started with. I might end up obliterating some of these trees up above and have to do them again. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully I did not just ruin everything here. Oh no, I might have. <laughs> well, that happens. I seem to have gotten rid of my upper tier, unfortunately. Might see about redoing that again, but I wanted the sky to be a little bit darker than it was. It wasn't quite dark enough for my taste to really balance what I had going on in the foreground. So I might let this dry now and then go back and do another upper tier. See, this is what happens when you watch me painting real time. Things kind of come and they go. <laughs> I want to create more trees there since I managed to obliterate them in my attempt to make the sky darker. As I said, this is the fun of watching me paint real time and seeing the results of decisions that I make, whether or not they are good decisions, <laughs> and showing you how you keep working from there when you do things like that, or when I do things like that. Anyway, adding some more trees here now. I do like the result of the darker sky, though. I like the uh, stormier look it has. Fits with what I was telling you about the waterfalls streaming down these hillsides. This pigment apparently lifts extremely easily. Lifting is what happens when the pigment comes off of your paper after it has dried via either rubbing it with a brush or doing a full-scale wash on top of it, as I just did. <laughs> and you saw what happened. The, the upper level of the hills just completely vanished in the wash, and I hardly had to move my brush at all for that to happen. Just the addition of water accomplished that. So that is a very clear demonstration of what I mean when I'm talking about lifting and how some pigments are much more prone to doing so than others. It can be a good thing, and it can be a bad thing. <laughs> well, not necessarily bad. It can be unexpected in this case. Uh, I will show you some of the upsides of the fact that this pigment lifts so easily as well in just a second as soon as I finish with this new tree line. Now, because this blue lifts so easily, it means that if I want to create highlights, it is something that should be accomplished fairly easily now. 
for example, on this outcropping of rock here, if I want to create a more nuanced texture to this cliff, I can do so by just taking a little bit of water on my brush tip and rubbing it in the areas where I want to take off some of the blue. And you can see how easily that happens here. As happened in the sky, all I really need to do is touch it with my brush tip and move a little bit and the paint comes, the pigment comes out. So I'm able to create these knobby little bits in my hillside with very little effort. And in fact, I can make these waterfalls blend down better as well. So this is the upside of a pigment that lifts easily. And one of the things that I'm always saying about watercolors is that it's, it's really just about learning how the paint behaves and sometimes down to the specifics of pigments, just getting used to what you have in your palette and knowing the behaviors of the various colors that you choose, your favorite colors, and being able to utilize those qualities in the appropriate situations. creating another layer of trees in between here because I think that this little gap is asking for that. It needs something more than what I have. This is a little bit trickier than it was doing it at the beginning because now I've got things below it and things above it and so I have to be careful how I blend the bottom edge in so that it doesn't look like it's sitting on top, physically on top of these tiers. doing some more lifting. And then 
I'm going to take some Payne's Gray on the tip of my brush and add some darker crevices as well. The other side of those highlighted bits. giving just the barest hint of texture to these cliff walls. Not too much. I still want the darkest areas to be the upper edges of the individual tiered tree lines. So this is just a little bit more, though, just a little bit of texture to add to those cliffs. And same with the other side of things. I want to add some more over there too. Let's see. I've got to be careful because I've got wet stuff up here and I've got wet stuff down here. So I'm going to rotate so that I have access to this side of things without smearing it all with the side of my hand. Sometimes working upside down gives you a fresh perspective on your piece and it lets you see what areas need attention better than having looked at it the same direction nonstop for some time. It's a fresh perspective. Upside down and in mirrors also works really well for that. I frequently use a mirror when I am initially, well, not for these pieces here because these, I didn't do any pre-preparation on composition. I just went for, went for it. But in a painting where I'm doing a lot of sketching and preparation with the composition, I really do find it useful to flip my painting either upside down or backwards or sometimes both in a mirror and upside down so that I can get a fresh perspective and see what elements in my composition need to be shifted or what parts are out of balance or out of whack. All right, I think I'm liking that balance of light and dark finally. I'm going to take my white gel pen and I'm going to add stars in the sky above here. And 
varying the size of my dots. Some of them are tiny little dots. Some of them a bit bigger. keeping the spread of them very varied. So you don't have a whole bunch of them evenly spaced out, but in this corner over here, there's just a couple of them and maybe one or two over here on this side, but much more density of them towards the center of the piece. Now what I'm trying to do with my composition here is to create this funnel for the viewer's eyes to follow down so that even if, so the initial focal point is of course going to be this tree here because it's so shiny with the, the mica in the pigment, but if the eye wanders elsewhere in the piece, which it will eventually, as a person gazes at the painting longer, what would happen is their eyes would move along things, maybe up into the sky, and the stars clustered in the center focus and funnel your gaze back down to the tree again. That's the flow of the piece, and that's always that's something to keep in mind, is always think about how you are guiding the attention of your viewer. And how do you take your attention back to your focal point when their gaze does wander to take in the other sights that you have for them in the remainder of the piece? <laughs>